so it's raining today and it's downright miserable and most people will tend to avoid the rain for very good reason it's wet it's uncomfortable and it's just downright miserable at times being out in the rain but for my money during spring and summer rainy days are some of the very best days for landscape photography and as soon as i see any rain forecast i am out straight like a shot and there's three main reasons for that well four one i'm probably a bit mad so we'll start with that one uh, two any sort of water-based landscapes like this stream that's running just beside me here the water levels will be higher so any features within that stream or river or waterfall will be that much better two you tend to get flat even consistent light which is great for shooting any woodland scenes such as the landscape i'm in within currently um, and finally and most importantly particularly in this time of year sort of late spring early summer the, the colours that you get in the new, fresh, crisp foliage look absolutely beautiful. You just get such lush, punchy greens throughout all of the actual vegetation in the trees, but also down at ground level in the, the ferns and the mosses. And when you get rain, those colours just come out that much more strongly, I find. So... Um, the plan today is to explore this gorge behind me, which is only about 100 metres uh, long. Um, try and take some shots to make the most of these rainy conditions. And um, yeah, hopefully make the best of an otherwise thoroughly miserable day. So I found this beautiful cascade of water you can see just here and it really, really caught my eye because it's cascading off this sort of mossy bank down into this actual gorge here and it's coming over a bit of an overhang which really creates a beautiful sheet of falling water straight into the middle of this gorge. So I've set up a composition here that I think works quite nicely and it's quite different to the the kind of usual style that I would shoot in these kind of locations. Um, so my camera is set up in quite a precarious position here, right in the middle of the actual riverbed. And it's in portrait orientation. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to position the falling cascade of water vertically with the uh, left side uh, rule of thirds vertical line, essentially. And this beautiful sort of white stream of water contrasts very, very strongly to the jet black cliff face that you can see right behind here. So it, it creates a very strong contrast across this side of the image. And then right in the foreground here, just in front of me, you can see there's a big pile of boulders and stones that the water is falling right onto. That creates a nice focal point and point of interest at the base of the shot. And then on the, the right side of the image, the river here flows off into the distance so it creates a nice leading line through the actual image straight into the actual backdrop. And then essentially the sides of the gorge kind of converge from both sides. And then it's kind of flanked by nice kind of woodland trees. We've got some deciduous trees, some non-deciduous trees. And we've got some very nice lush green colors coming through in the backdrop as well. So all in all, I think it comes together really, really quite nicely indeed. The rain is coming down quite heavily, actually, a lot more heavily than I forecast. So I really do not have the actual right clothing on today at all. I am absolutely soaked, but that's just the way it goes. Um, you might be wondering what this is on the front of my camera. And um, believe it or not, this is a shower cap. And it's one of the most invaluable bits of equipment that you can use in locations like this and in conditions like this where there's so much moisture around because it's one of the biggest enemies in shooting in locations like this is moisture collecting on the front lens element and 
it's an absolute nightmare to get rid of. Potentially, if you get too much on it, it will just smear all your microfiber cloths will get damp. And before you know it, your shoot is absolutely ruined. And I've been there so many times. So what this essentially does is it, it stops the actual water droplets going on the front of your actual lens and it makes a, a massive difference. And the good thing with these shower caps as well is you can see through them to a degree, which means you can make kind of crude adjustments to your composition while still keeping this on the front. So it works very well. Don't waste your money on all of those very expensive um, rain covers for your camera and stuff. In my experience, they don't do anything that a very cheap shower cap doesn't do. So that's a top tip. I bought um, about 20 or 30 of these. I've got one on the vlog camera and one here and they really are lifesavers. Now, uh, I'm obviously set up quite low down in the, in the river here and settings wise, um, this is actually quite a complex shot to pull off. First of all, I'm shooting at about 23 mil portrait orientation using base ISO of ISO 64 to maximize my image quality and dynamic range. Um, in terms of aperture, I'm shooting at F11. Uh, it's gonna be shutter speed that's really gonna fluctuate quite a lot here because there's very dark bits of the image and very bright bits of the image. So I'm gonna do an exposure blend uh, to try and pull out the maximum dynamic range out of this scene. Um, so my first Exposure is going to be down on the foreground rocks here. I'm going to shoot that probably at about half a second to get some nice texture in the falling water here. I'm then also going to take a second exposure down on the foreground here at about one second to make sure that I don't clip the shadows in this dark cliff face here so I can get a nice balance there. I'll then also take um, another exposure probably in my mid ground here to make sure that I can focus stack that and get front to back sharpness. And then it's probably gonna be the backdrop that causes me the most issues here because there's very bright highlights coming through the trees in the, in the canopy of the forest there. So I'm probably gonna shoot a range of exposures ranging from about one second right down to maybe 10th of a second, 15th of a second, that sort of region. And hopefully in post-processing by blending those exposures together, I'll avoid any of these very bright highlights burning through the trees there and creating quite ugly distractions in the backdrop of my image. So in post-production, I should be able to get front to back sharpness and pull out the max dynamic range out of this scene. The other trick here is I've got a circular polarizer on the front and that's, that's kind of really serving three functions here actually. The first function is it's cutting down the amount of light that's reaching my sensor. So it allows me to, to get those longer shutter speeds of half a second a second which obviously allows me to catch uh, capture the movement in the water here the second job it does is it takes off some of the reflections off these stones here so it deepens the contrast in this foreground of the shot and then the third thing it does is it um, takes the sheen off the vegetation in the backdrop there so that actually allows the vibrant spring colors in this forest to really, really punch out so, so vibrantly. Weather conditions are all over the place. The sun's coming out now, which is absolutely not really what I want, but I think it's just gonna be one of those showery days. Now, the waterfall you can see behind me here, I'm not gonna take a picture of it today because I took a picture of it about a week ago, and it's only about 10 meters away from the other waterfall that I just uh, shot. And um, last week, it was an absolute torrent flowing down here. It was probably running at two or three times the rate you can see behind me now. And it was really quite dramatic and really, really uh, captivating subject matter. And what I love about this waterfall is it's just, 
in this beautiful secluded little gorge that I've never seen this photographed before and it's so easy to walk on by. And it was only by quizzing the landscape and being inquisitive about, oh, I wonder what's in that particular gorge um, that I actually managed to find this. And it shows the real value in landscape photography in always trying to push the boundaries and, and um, just going out and exploring basically. And this waterfall, I love the way that it, it cascades down this face of rock here into the gorge. And then out just behind me here, you've got this very dark um, cliff face here that's covered in uh, ivy draping plants and moss. And it's just really lush and almost kind of semi-tropical. I know it sounds a bit far-fetched, but it, it kind of feels like that, particularly this time of year when the colors and the new sort of vegetation comes out. Um, so it's a really captivating little scene behind me here. And I shot two compositions of this last week and I, I couldn't quite work out which composition I prefers. I shot a portrait composition where I positioned the waterfall out to the left and the, uh, a bit of the cliff face here out to the, uh, the right hand side. And then I captured a bit of the forest canopy up and above um, just to show that the context of where the actual gorge is actually located. Um, but I did capture some bright highlights up at the top of the image and I'm not sure whether they're distracting or not. I couldn't quite make my mind up on it. And then I shot a, a sort of tighter portrait, uh, not portrait, landscape composition where I really kind of excluded the top of the scene so that the forest and the, the sky and focused just on the waterfall and the actual cliff face here and just frame them within the scene. And I really quite like that. And we got beautiful side lighting coming in last week, illuminating and adding kind of lighting accents to the cliff face here. And it worked really quite nicely, but I can't figure out which of the two images I prefer. So I'll put them on screen for you now and uh, let me know down below in the comments whether you prefer the portrait or the landscape. So I've come 30 or 40 meters further downstream from the waterfalls that I shot earlier. You might be able to make them out right in the distance just behind me. And I've come to an exact location and spot that I shot a week ago when I was last here. And I've set my tripod nice and high with my camera in portrait orientation here. And what I'm particularly interested in is the old gnarly twisted tree that you can see behind me that's perched precariously on the edge of that cliff face, almost gravity defying. And it's a tree filled with character and it really stands out from the, the uniform straight trees that fill this forest and this area. So it makes for a really captivating subject. And um, in terms of the composition, I'm positioning that tree towards the top of the actual frame. And then one of the waterfalls that I shot earlier is down to the bottom left and there's a moss covered boulder down to the bottom right. And all three components hang together very, very effectively indeed. And it makes for a really nice scene, I think. And I was hoping to shoot it again today, but conditions are just not favorable this week for two reasons. One, the flow of water through that waterfall is just not what it was a week ago. So it doesn't stand out within the composition to the same extent. And then probably, more uh, pressingly, the actual foliage in the actual canopy of trees here has burst to life in the last week to such an extent that it's actually started to obscure the actual branches of that old gnarly tree. So really, 
I think the shooting window to, to get the most out of this scene has passed and I'm very glad that I managed to get the shot a week ago when I was last here. Settings wise for the shot when I was here um, last week, I shot at about F13 I think, um, ISO 64, about 50 mil and I can't remember what the shutter speed was but it didn't matter too much because there wasn't an awful lot of movement in the scene outside of the water so I think it was something in the region of one second if my memory serves me correctly. I'll just pop that um, shot up on screen now for you to see it. Overall it was a nice shot that I was really quite happy with. So I think that's a wrap for today. The rain has actually been a lot heavier than I anticipated. I thought it was going to be quite light and easy to work in, but it's uh, it's been pretty torrential at times and uh, I'm pretty soaked through. One day I'll learn to, to wear the right equipment for these shoots. Um, I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I hope you've enjoyed the image that I took today back at the first waterfall and also the images that I captured last week at this, similar, at this uh, same location when it was all so tipping down with rain. Um, and I suppose the key message from today is just embrace the rain, embrace the miserable conditions because if you happen to, to live anywhere close to any woodland areas, and they don't even have to be big woodland areas, I mean look at the size of this gorge. It's honestly only about 100 meters long and I've got three images just in this gorge. You can, really, um, you can really get a lot out of just small locations if you just work them and spend a bit of time with them. And conditions like this, thoroughly depressing, wet and miserable conditions work wonders in locations like this. So yeah, if you're struggling for inspiration in those horrific summer months, um, which are some of my least favourite throughout the year for landscape photography, then embrace the rain, you won't regret it. Thanks very much for watching, see you soon.